Hello, it's Sami here, back again with another video, and today I'm joined by Adam McCola. Adam, how are you? I'm very good, Sammy, man. Thank you for having us on, bro. No, it's fine, thanks. Um, during lockdown, how have you been keeping? How have you? How are you? It's it's a weird time, isn't it? Um, never kind of had anything like this where, you know, we we have to stay indoors. Luckily, everyone around me is healthy and that, so just trying to keep busy and trying to make videos every day so that I don't go absolutely insane. Um, cause if I stop having a structure, I'll probably just become a, become what I was when I was a student again, waking up late and all that. So, um, yeah, just trying to keep some structure and trying to keep my sanity. Have you been watching anything or, uh, trying something new or something like that? Um, I've been trying to like, like, I, I, I find myself trying to learn things on YouTube, either cooking wise when I'm not doing YouTube or around what I'm doing on YouTube because and I got into this industry by accident, so I, I came into it with no experience of presenting, no experience of video producing or editing, so any chance I can get to learn or teach myself something, I'll, I will try and do that, but um, yeah, Netflix has been good as well, like the MJ stuff, I've enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, it's a shame it's every week, because yeah, I yeah. want to just binge everything like through it, but um, yeah, like checking little things out um and i've been catching up on all the classic wwf from when i was a kid which has been good fun what about um, you uh i've been like yeah watching netflix trying to find new things to watch i've been watching uh, house of cards at the moment i've never seen that see like I, i've heard of it a lot and but i've never seen it and that's what i like like when i've got something that i can go and watch the whole thing like because yeah, yeah. i've got there late like i, I don't mind that yeah, that, that's what it was, because I, I came into it late as well, so I'm just watching it now. But going back to the beginning for you, you said you um, it was like an accident that you came into this. Yeah. You, what was it, um, you found it on a forum, the Talking for Man United fans or something, was it along those lines? Um, so basically, like, I used to, when I was, when I was a kid, yeah, um, I used to be on, like, I was just like everyone at school and college or whatever just knows that I'm that guy that just loves football, loves Man yeah. United or whatever. So like I used to be on forums and things like that and I used to be like moderator on a forum. So I used to always be online and be involved in debate around United Online. And then I, I was working for my dad and I was chilling at the office um, when I was probably supposed to be working and I yeah. seen something about... Uh, it was from Full Time Devils. They'd just started and they wanted people to get involved. So I um, give them a shout because I was always going to games anyway. Um, and so I gave them a shout. And from there, like I did one thing on Skype and then it just started to grow. And, and then I just kept saying, all right, let's do this. Let's try this. And I was inexperienced. So they kind of gave me a chance a little yeah. bit as well. Um, but I think it might have been a little bit that they didn't have anybody probably i don't know that was actually capable i don't know in it but yeah. i just took that chance there and then it just kept growing from there so like with the fan cams my brother used to film me on my phone and then eventually like we had a cameraman there and stuff so it like it all grew very slowly um and organically but it was just by accident really like going into interviewing fans uh going out like outside old trafford um what is that? What was that like for you starting out? Because you didn't have any experience at presenting school or like any like qualifications to do with that. Yeah. So it was that different. Yeah, it was weird because like I knew how to speak to people. Like I'd law, I'd done a law degree. Yeah. I had done. Uh, I'd worked in my dad's um, property company, so I'd had interaction with people all the time. I knew how to speak to people, but then I found when I tried to interview people. I wouldn't speak like I speak to you. Yeah. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't speak like that. I'd speak how I think people want me to speak, like or how it is on TV. And once I realised that that's not what I was supposed to be doing, I lost a lot of that nervousness or that that umming and ahhing or the stuttering when I was speaking. I like a lot of that got lost. And plus, what you got to remember is I'm doing something I'm so comfortable with. I'm so yeah. comfortable talking about Man United, talking about football talking about things like with football fans so it's not like I was covering something I didn't have a clue about 
Um, so that probably helped a little bit, but it was just once I'd lost that, ah, oh, I need to be like what I see on TV. Once I lost that, I was fine. Because ultimately people come on YouTube because they want to escape the rubbish that's on TV. Um, so if we're trying to be like what they're seeing on TV, they're just going to be like, what's the point in this? So, um, yeah, once I realized that, I, I got a little bit better. But f for you, um, like at Full Time Devils, you're like, you said it, like you just stayed there for like years. You're like the constant figure that's been at Full Time Devils. Like when things have changed, you're yeah. the one that's, that, you're the one that's, that, that's stayed. Why, why have you stayed? Um, why have you felt a need to stay? Because even though it's not mine, I don't own it, um, it feels like my baby. Like, I've been there from, like you say, I've been there from the start. So even where, like, the media company may have changed hands or um, the producer might have changed or, I don't know, people around me have left or whatever, I've always felt like this is something I've been involved in from the start and, like, I want to keep it going because I enjoy it. I also believe in it, like I believe that you should have that out there, but I want to keep that going. Um, and like, I think last year when I went to um, Australia and Singapore, like yeah. I had made, I had made the decision that I was done. Like this was it. I was going to finish then. And that was going to be my last trip. And I was done. And like, I realized like, like, I had, it weren't just because of that, but I had people coming up to me and like, ah. Oh, you make us feel so closer to the club and things like that. And it was just like, that's why I'm doing it. And I kind of forgot, like at that point, like I forgot why I was doing it. And when you remember that, it's so much easier to keep going. Um, but yeah, it was like, I don't know, I'm just going to stay all the time. That's that's my plan, isn't it? Um, just, just keep doing it. How long do you see yourself staying on YouTube or staying making content of some kind? I I don't think I will ever be snapped up for telly or anything like that. Yeah. So with that in mind, probably for the rest of my career, however long that is in this, unless I get bored of it or whatever. Um, so yeah, for for as long as I'm enjoying it, really, um, I wouldn't just do it. Like if you're gonna do some do YouTube just for money, it's yeah. it's not easy, you know. Like people probably think, oh, look at YouTubers, they make so much money on that. But really, they don't. Like, the top ones do, but really, they don't. Do you know what I mean? So, it's like, if you don't enjoy it, you can't do it. Um, and, yeah, as long as I keep enjoying it, I just carry on doing it, man. Um, I'd love to, as well, build, like, uh, like I'm trying to start another platform um, where I can do stuff that's not just football. And then I can eventually give people an opportunity, like how I was given an opportunity to build something. So, there's that happening as well. But, again, like... It's literally me building it from the ground up. Um, so I've been fortunate to have help with Full Time Devils. It hasn't just been me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, talking about uh, Full Time Devils, you're like, you, they were like one of the first fan channels uh, out there. And yeah, I think Redman TV were the first. Yeah. And I think Arsenal Fan TV and Full Time Devils kind of came through at the yeah. first, same time, but Arsenal Fan TV were just before them. Yeah. So. Being then, like, no one had seen, like, YouTubers interviewing fans and that sort of content. And then it grew to be, like, you could meet the, some players, you could meet some former players, you could meet some legends. Who was, who was the first um, player that you met and interviewed? Oh, for, the, for an interview, the first yeah. player I met and interviewed was um, Brian Robson and Andy Cole, both of them at the same time. Uh, yeah. And that was for... Like, we were playing football with them, and then we just interviewed them. And I remember, like, being nervous the whole time and shaking and, like, nothing. Because, like, I'd grown up watching Andy Cole, do you know what I mean? Like, my mate in school used to pretend to be Andy Cole, and I'd pretend to be Beckham, and we'd play football. Like, so it's like, he was one of my heroes, so it was a bit weird doing that. Um, but, yeah, I think it was Brian Robson and Andy Cole. My first interviews, like, I'd met players before that, like, just going to games and yeah. things like that. But I had never like interviewed them, so that was my first one. When when you meet, well, like obviously it's not what you usually do, but when you do meet those footballers and interview them, do you still get that initial feeling? Like yeah, 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 yeah. Like especially, well, 
Now, if I, for example, if I see, I don't know, if I see David Beckham, or Eric Cantona, or whoever, like, I'd lose my head. Mm. But there's like, there's certain people that can make me lose my head. Like, because I've met a lot of my heroes already, if I see, I don't know, I don't know who to say. Like, if I don't know, if I see Rio again, yeah, I'm not gonna, because I've met Rio. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know what he's about now. Like. So I'm not gonna lose, but he's still, but I'm still thinking, oh my god, that's real. Yeah, that's you know what real. I mean? Like, but yeah, it's it's got a bit easier. Um, I remember the first time I met the class of '92, I was shaking like the whole like I was chatting to them and I was shaking and that, and it was like, what are you doing? Um, but it's just, I'm a I'm a fan in it, so I suppose that's what what makes it good, I guess. Like when people see that another fan is meeting these guys, I suppose it helps them relate a little bit. Yeah. I don't like full time devils. Um, it's watched by a lot of the players as well. Who was the first player, or do you remember when like a player said, Oh yeah, I know you, I watch you? Um the first player to interact with us, I think, was more was it Morgan Schneidlin? I think he liked like a fan cam that we uploaded yeah. or something like that. Um, but in terms of like I remember once outside Old Trafford on the way back um, to the game, uh, from the game, sorry. I think United just beat Leicester 4-1. And I was walking back to the car and a Range Rover had pulled up in front of me and my brother. And I was thinking, what the fuck? We're like, what's going on here? Like, are we about to get robbed? Like, what's happening? Yeah. And uh, the windows have gone down and it was Jesse Lingard and Marcus Rashford. And they were like, Adam, what's going on? And I was like, what? Like, how did you use, like, know who I am? And it was like, me and my brother went crazy. Like, it was a bit nuts. But, um, it was, like, weird things like that happen. Um, but, yeah, just... Oh, sorry, I forgot what the question was. I was just trying to think. Oh, no, 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 no. That was that. But, yeah, like, footballers getting involved. Like, it happens a lot. Eric Cantona followed full-time Devils on Instagram. Like, and that helped us get an interview with him. Um, so sometimes you get lucky with things like when we got the Hendrik Larson interview, we just DM'd him, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm sure you've you've seen, you got like by just asking me, do you know what I mean? And I said yeah. Whereas you know you might get told no by some people. And it's just trial and error. You ask them, you some will say yes, some will say no in it. So um, yeah, but Eric Cantona following us is a bit crazy. That's crazy. And um, for you interviewing Cantona, that that's your hero. When you and Halson did it, it was like it was crazy because. It was like Cantona so different as a like a person and a player. So it's like a it's not like interviewing Rio where you like you could see that happening. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, because like because Cantona is like enigmatic in it. So you're yeah. like I, I might like right now I know I'm probably never get the chance to interview Sir Alex Ferguson. So I'll yeah. never think about that happening. So if that was to get arranged, I'd be like what? And that was the same with Cantona. It was like whoa, we're doing this. And I think at the time, he had only allowed three people to come to see him. And it was the BBC, like the Guardian and us. And it was like, what are we doing here? Like, it's a bit weird, but it was crazy. And I remember him walking in. It was the second time me and Steve had met him. And he walked in and he remembered us. And then he was like, can I have some food? I just want to chill for a bit. And we was like, mate, you can do what you want. And after he ate, he came in with a glass of wine. And we had a like I had a Guinness, stay had a beer. I remember we just sat there having a drink before we filmed, and it was like, what's going on here? This is weird. Um, so yeah, Cantona's Cantona was sick. Um, one thing that I've seen like the last few years, you got more into like we're not we're more like into making content about boxing. Yeah. And for for me, like I, I'm a huge boxing fan, so seeing boxing content, that's why I like watching as well as football stuff. What made you want to like divert, well not divert, but add boxing content to what you were already making? Again, it's like it was. I was. I've always been a boxing fan from when I was a kid. Not as much as football, so I'm not like <clears throat> with United. You can ask me a random game, and I'll probably know what the score yeah. was. With boxing, I'm not as as switched on like that. I'm probably. A, little bit more casual than I am as football but I've been watching boxing all my life as well and like from Prince Naz you know all those Lennox Lewis Tyson I've been watching it up until now so I've been an active fan and an active follower and I used to tweet about it all the time 
And if you don't know, I'm guessing you watch Filthy Fellas and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know who Tigo is, right? Yeah, yeah. So Tigo, I have to thank him really, for because Tigo is the one that obviously knew me and he knew I liked boxing. So he put me, Savage Dan and Steve O together um, to do a boxing show. And that's where all the boxing content come from. Then obviously last year, some of my tweets, old tweets got chucked out. So I couldn't work for them anymore. But it's like, I'm still going to be doing boxing content because that was my leg into it. Now people know I kind of do it. I've had a lot of experiences around the boxing world now. I've met a lot of people. So I feel like I could do that now more on my own. Yeah. As much as it, great it was doing that, um, and I'd love to still be doing it. You know, facts are I can't, so I'd still continue to do it. But that was the way I got into it. It was all down to um, Tigo kind of saying, like, I, I'd say to him, like, let's make some boxing stuff. And he'd be on it. But, it, you know, and it, he, he kind of kept that in the back of his mind. And when he had a chance to do it, he did it. So really he's the one to thank for, for making that happen um, a lot. Um, and boxing is, like, different because it's not like football where <clears throat> there's, like, loads of stages to maybe meet in a player or uh, meeting someone that's important in, in the game. But boxing, you can kind of get close to people, like boxers and, like, promoters. So... Yes and no. It's boxers are more open in the sense that I think boxers are less shouted. Yeah. So as they grow up, boxers like unless you're Anthony Joshua who wins the Olympics and becomes a professional and the world knows you, so you don't need to sell tickets. But a lot of boxers, like my friend Raz is a professional boxer, he has to sell tickets for his own fights. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of these people and the way they grow up, these boxers, they're working class kids who stay in working class environments, who aren't as shouted, who don't have everything done for them. So they're more down to earth people. As weird as it sounds, like I'm not saying footballers oh, yeah. aren't, yeah. but footballers are very media trained. So they're going to tell you to put things through agents or put things, whereas boxers will just probably tell you there and then, like if you ask them for an interview, they'll give it you. And that's where you've seen the success of people like IFL, head movement, like they've continued growing because of how accessible boxers are. Um, but actually getting to the events and becoming part of the media, oh. getting media passes, it's getting more and more difficult because if you look at how many more people are now interested in boxing that weren't, it's become more of a casual sport, which I suppose is what Anthony Joshua has done to it. He's, he's brought so many eyes and, and ears to it. And I think I think it kind of started with Amir Khan as well, um, you know, just before then, because a lot he brought a lot of people into boxing as well with his Olympics and things, so... But yeah, they are they are more. I think they're more realistic. Yeah, they're more real because they've probably lived more um, and haven't been as shouted. When you're a footballer and you're in an academy from 11 and you sign professional terms, you you're very shouted. Everything's done for you. Um, with boxers, a little bit different. Um, with you mentioned like head movement TV, they're obviously based in Birmingham. Are you do you. Is that what you want to see? More content coming out of where you where you live and where you grew up? Yeah, man. And that's why I'm doing straight up. That's why yeah. I I well, a lot of my relationships are organic anyway. Like if I like you, I'll like I don't like to force things. So yeah. everyone forces things in this. Like ah, uh, he's doing big right now, so I need to do a video with him. When actually, just do your own thing in it. And that's what I am like. If I like someone, I'll make content with them it's like with cheek sport dave and cheek sport joel i met them i became friends with them and then i started doing stuff with them and when i met them they had no subscribers you know what i mean so it was like it weren't oh i'm gonna benefit from these yeah. guys it was like i like these guys let's do stuff together and um the same with momo from head movement tv d2 uh bradders all them guys are the same and the fact that they're from the local area as well obviously i support manchester united i'm an out-of-town boy and a lot of what I do is based in Manchester and I don't want that to change. But I am a Birmingham boy as well and like I'm proud of the city and I want to put... I know there's a lot of talent here, whether it's musically, whether it's presenting-wise, whether it's sports, whatever, that don't really get covered because, you know, I don't know, maybe the spotlight's a bit brighter in London and things like that. So it'd be good to give a platform or uh, another platform here um, for people to come through, man. And one of the things that I I watch you uh, from is a Coffee 90 doc where you talked about the South Asian footballers. Are you looking to do more documentaries? 
like in the near future or is that not really only if i care about the topic i don't want to do a documentary if i don't care about the topic like i'm not going to jump let me make a documentary now about you know whatever if i'm not really interested in it like i need it to come from the heart really so i i am interested in it the one that i want to do at the moment is based on the price of football Mm -hmm. and like how kids these days have to pay five pound a head an hour just to play football you know what i mean and it's like the price of football is ridiculous so i would like to look into that and that's something that i care about um but i wouldn't like to just force things um, in terms of documentaries and trying to do docs just because um, I think the reason why that one worked was because I had written it and thought of it for about two three years mm-hmm. and then I got to a point where I was like all right I want to do this now how do I do it and then I remember speaking to someone at Copper and I said do you want do you want do you want to give me some budget to make this video and they did so as soon as that happened I thought Yes, it'd be great if I made this video and I got all the views and it was on my platform. But ultimately as well, we want it to make an impact. And um, Copper Knight is a massive platform. Um, and I think got like a quarter of a million views, so it didn't do too badly. Um, but again, it's like you can make a documentary, but what are you really going to change in it? Um, so it's a bit of a weird one. But yeah, I think it helps that I was invested in it. Do you like when researching and when finding did you were you shocked by anything um i was shocked by a lot of people seem to think that there's more representation of of british asians in cricket and it's fairer in cricket actually it's not so we think oh look there's monty panasar plays for england and you know moeen ali plays for england Uh, representation's fine when actually when you look at a a lower level and you look at the grassroots level mm. there's the, the representation isn't the same so they're not all being fed through and it, the, there is an issue there with with um the, there is the same issue kind of there in cricket on a, on a smaller scale um i also found it incredible that dan kilvington uh did a invest like he did a, a study into it and in that study he, he covered that um I might have the numbers wrong, but what he said, what he covered from it was that there are more British Asians than than their white or black counterparts playing grassroots, grassroots football yeah. in in the UK at this moment, and it's still you, you wouldn't think that. Yeah. Um, and I, that would that was something that I found really interesting as well. And just before uh, this pandemic started, what were your plans for this year, like just generally for you? But I'm guessing some of it might have been ruined. Um, Plans were to to kind of make my channel grow more because whatever way I look at it, I don't own full-time devils. So I need to look after myself. For all I know, full-time devils could say, all right, Adam, your time's up. Mm -hmm. And And then what? Do you know what I mean? That probably won't happen. But life, things change very quickly. So um, I'm, I'm focusing my channel. And I think the lockdowns actually helped me. Because before that, I spend four or five days a week on the road. I'm all over the place. I never get to focus on my channel. So it's helped a little bit with that. Obviously, with nothing to talk about, it's a lot more difficult. Um, but yeah, it's it, the plans were just to keep growing. Um, like last year, I had loads of plans. And then middle of June, everything was up in the air, you know, loads of stupidness going online i couldn't really work for anyone and it was just everything stopped so i had to kind of start from scratch again um and i think ultimately the power is in ownership if you own your own platform if you own what you're doing no one can take that away from you no one can cancel it no one can do anything that's your platform do you know what i mean um so that's what i'm focusing at the moment is building my own things and continuing to do what i did in the background um I'm working a bit smarter as well. And for you, you just hit 70k on your own channel. You're trying to get the road to 100k right now. It's like that's your short-term goals at the moment. Yeah, you know what annoys me? Yeah, you know if I started my like I started my YouTube channel a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Actually, I started my first YouTube channel it was called MUFC Ads, 
and it was videos of me walking into the ground not of me but of the, like, in yeah. front of me and like videos from inside the stadium and things and before i started youtube i deleted that channel for some reason i don't know why which mm -hmm. is that but if i started doing my channel properly from when I started full-time levels, I should already be on like 200K, mm -hmm. 300K, but I didn't focus on it. And that's kind of frustrating. So I need to get to 100K ASAP. Well, Adam, thank you for your time today. Sammy, nice one, bro. Good luck with everything you're doing as well. Um, nice, if you ever need any help from me, man, or if you ever need me to put you into contact with anybody, I'll, I'll try and help. Um, it's good what you're doing. Keep it going as well. I know it's, Sometimes you look at views and things like that and you think, ah, oh, like it's not happening or something. But as long as you keep working and you keep focusing and you keep being yourself, eventually it will happen. And if, even if you only have a thousand people watching you, as long as they're engaged in what you're doing yeah. and they're, they're enjoying what you're doing and they keep coming back, then that's a, that's a big audience. People get lost in views, yeah. I, I, even then, like I'm saying, ah, oh, 70,000 people. Mm -hmm. I need, I should have 200, 300K. Bro, 70,000 people can nearly fill all traffic. Old traffic yeah. So it's like, put it into perspective of things, really. And I think, yeah, just keep cracking and good luck with what you're doing. Well, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. Adam's channel will be in the description below. I'm sure you're already subscribed. Um, and thank you for watching. Thank you for listening and see you.